Okay, here we are. It's the next morning. We poured this yesterday about one o'clock in the afternoon. Yesterday, and it's now five after seven in the morning. Plenty of time to uh, get this undone. So I won't bore you with the whole taking all the frame off. It's kind of like watching paint dry. So anyway, I'll give it a start. Some things you might need, you need to drill because I got the screws all in here. Uh, small thin pry bar and a rubber mallet could come in handy. So, I just want to mention, I flipped this by myself this morning on the boards and I put it, this is a piece of plywood just with a piece of carpet on it. I like it to land on something soft. I don't let it just fall. I put a board underneath it to catch it. If you've never flipped something this big by yourself, I strongly suggest that um, you get some help. Uh, there's a little bit of a trick to it, doing it yourself. They are really heavy, so uh, I suggest you get someone to give you a hand flipping it, or you, you could get pretty seriously hurt or injure your hands or something. So uh, just be careful when you're flipping it upside down. piece off. Now I'll pause the camera and we'll do the rest and then I'll come back. Okay, sides are all off. That actually took two minutes like this. I could have left the camera going. <clears throat> so you can see I used a brad nailer just to temporarily hold it before I uh, put my screws in. So there's a little piece of wood trim stuck on there. That's going to give us the top detail. Um, Talk about the boxes, like the sheet of melamine costed me, I think it was $32. You can actually get four forms out of a sheet if, if you're good at cutting on a, on a piece. So, I mean, that comes, it's pretty cheap to, to build a mold in the other. So I'm not that careful I'll, if it rips or it breaks, I don't get too upset. You can use them over, I have done it. Um, the problem with melamine is sometimes you get water will absorb up in the top in here and it'll get a swell and then that's going to affect your next casting so i tend to just throw the pieces out or take them to the dump so so here we go here's the top reveal there we go so hope you can see that good so there we go so no bug holes you don't see any bug holes in the top Looks great. Uh, this looks really nice along the edge. That's just some paint off of the <clears throat> the trim. That'll all come off. Not a big deal. So now we're going to pull that leaf out of there. Leaves. Uh. So now I have to apologize. I kind of screwed that up. I thought I was filming and I wasn't. Um, so the leaf was on. I just used my little pick tool here. I just went underneath. The stem piece lifted it up and it's up. I apologize for that, sorry. I thought it was filming, but it wasn't. So you're gonna have a little bit of cleanup. We're gonna bring the camera a little closer here. So you can see it goes around the edges and some concrete has come up underneath. Can you see that? Just a little bit. So you're gonna to have to do a little bit of cleanup work. That's where these little tools come in great for just gently going around the edges and pulling out the piece of the leaf. You can see how that's coming along. So you'll see that, see that little piece of, see this? There's a little dip in here in the leaf and the concrete's gotten between the leaf and the thing. So all you, I hook underneath it, see that? And it just flips up like that. So you'll learn where those little pieces are. It's like this one here too. And then you can go in and just clean it out. Just run this along the edge of the, uh, the leaf. There we go. 
see if we can find another one of those so you can see it. Ooh, too close. So there's one right there, see it? So I'm just gonna hook my little hook underneath there and it's gonna pull right up, right, see? And you just continue to work on it to define your edges a little bit better. And uh, then you're gonna clean up the edges later just with a brush or something. And uh, I'll show, show you more when we get rolling here. Okie doke. So as I'm working away here, I just wanna show you uh, a, a couple more things. You can see how wide the leaf is going out, right? With the, the concrete here. <clears throat> so I said you can use the pick tool, but if you have an air compressor, even a small air compressor, the hose with the air gun on it, I'm just going to show you what you can do. You're going to tap it on the edge while depressing the air, and you're going to see how it assists you here, okay? Can you watch? down so we can get a little a better look on this one. We'll go on this side so you can see. I know basically where the leaf is, so it might be a little easier for me to uh, find it. But you can also use these little fine tap chisels, or this one here. And you can just gently tap the edge, and you'll start exposing the leaf as well. So it's a little bit of work, but uh, well worth it in the end. Okay, so we'll come back in a minute. starting to take shape you can see that I never said it was going to be easy and it was going to be fast right uh, so it's a little bit of work uh, I really like when there's depth to the to the top of the piece it's much better than just a flat flat piece I've even done some I might even show that when I do some of the other ones is I'll put a thin thin layer of like a little slurry and then float a leaf on top and then I dig it out later and it's really recessed into the top and it looks really cool so Anyway, I'll keep plugging along and I'll keep giving you a little peeks at what I'm doing here. Okay, here we are. It's been about uh, 10 days since I finished this project. So I don't have to wet cure mine because I have a few additives in here that allows me to get away with it. not doing that. But if you're doing this and you're not putting some of the additives I have in, make sure you keep this out of the sun, wet it down a couple times a day. Uh, either damp burlap sacks, spray it with a hose, piece of plastic on it, but the main thing is keep it out of the sun. You don't want it curing too quick. I'm just going to tilt my camera down a tad here. But I can't, so it's just going to stay there. 
So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to seal it fast. So this is a solvent based sealer that I use. It just goes by the name Clear Glaze. There's a million different sealers you can get uh, to use for concrete. Find one you like, water based, solvent based, whatever. Um, and then if you find one that works, stick with it. So before you seal it, have a good look over on your project, right? Uh, take a good look because once you throw that sealer on, whatever's under there is going to be stuck under there. So make sure there's no hairs or bugs or you know what I mean. Something stuck under there. So uh, I just like to start on the bottom. I've got my doors wide open. That's why I'm not wearing a mask because there's a lot of ventilation in here today. If you're indoors and doing this, I'd wear a respirator uh, because you can get pretty stinky. This stuff, this kind, water base isn't bad. So anyway, what I usually do is I always start on the bottom and work my way up. Uh, and just a, another thing for you to keep in mind, this is a matte finish. I wouldn't use a, uh, a high gloss on, on a bench. Uh, I never have done, but um, it is gonna change color. Your concrete is gonna darken up a little bit. So I do half and half. Some of my customers like it raw concrete, and some like it that's been sealed a little bit darker. But you'll have to find out your own uh, market for yourself and uh, what people will like or what you feel comfortable in doing. So you just get it on pretty liberal. Try not to get any big pool ups. You don't want a swimming pool full of sealer. Uh, the good thing about my sealer is it's only about 15 or 20 minutes between coats. So you can get a couple coats on real quick. And don't panic too. You'll see when you first start doing it, you're going to see your brush strokes. You're going to see all that kind of nonsense and you're going to think, oh my God, this looks terrible. But you give it a day curing and you'll see all of that all uh, come out and it'll be all one one base color so don't panic and keep working it like that's the mistake I think a lot of newbies make they keep trying to add more and more and work out uh, the little lines it's not really necessary uh, just go over the once like I said the one thing you want to avoid is uh, pooling you don't want any big puddles of sealer around so that's about it. That's the first coat. So I'll come back in about 15, 20 minutes and I'll slap on a second coat. So it's been about 20, 25 minutes since I put that first coat on. Had my brush and some acetone because it's solvent based. So here I go with the second coat. Again, it's just I like to start on the bottom. You put it on really liberal. Don't be cheap with it. You can spray it on with a sealer sprayer you can pick up at a concrete store. Um, you can roll it on with a nap roller, but make sure you get the lint free or else you've got a really big mess on your hand. Make sure if you get any little brushes, hair, uh, brushes from your hairs, huh? from your brush on your sealer, make sure you pick them off or they're in there forever. Not forever, but they're a real nuisance to try and get out. So again, on the top, you don't want pooling in these deep spots here. Try to avoid going back over spots that you've already done. Because it's this, because it's a solvent base, it sets up quick. Uh, and this for sure you do in the shade or you do in the early mornings. You don't want to be doing this in full sun. You're going to have big, big problems. So I like to do it usually early in the morning. Do any sealing. And like I said, it's, I've got my big doors open so there's plenty of ventilation in here. But uh, if you're doing this indoors, for sure wear an organic vapor mask. Okay, so that's it. So like I said, now you don't want to go back, you don't want to fuss too much. 
Just make sure if you've got some pooling, you kind of scoop that up a little bit. And that's pretty much it. And I'll show you the finished product when it's in the store. Hey gang, well, there it is. All finished, ready to go over to the uh, store. Uh, I'm just using this style of leg, it's called an Omega leg. Um, you could make a matching, which I've done before, and it, it's pretty easy. You're just doing exactly what you did for this top, only in a smaller version for the, uh, for the uh, legs. So you just make a smaller box, thicker because it's a leg, put your leaf in the bottom and the same sort of thing and then you've got matching uh, legs. So probably on a, f a future project when I do one of these ones here, I'll make proper legs and then you can see what that's all about. Okay gang.